What's going down? What's going down, ELC community? What's going on, ELC community? Welcome to another edition of the What's Going Down podcast. I'm here with Mr. Nick Luke. He's not only a sound engineer for digital sound solutions, but he's also a student in Las Cruces. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, so Mr. Nick Luke, environmental science, yes, that's sir. what you're going through. Uh, tell me a little bit about that before I start getting into some uh, questions and the crazy stuff during COVID and how you guys don't go to school anymore. <laughs> okay, well, environmental science, it's kind of encompasses all the disciplines of science. We have chemistry, biology, geology, soil, water, um, everything but astronomy and uh, so astrology. So basically from the ground up for us. Yes, uh, yes. Everything, not scientists. Right, it's all the sciences that are within Earth and natural sciences. So that's, that's uh, awesome. Tons of math. Anything in particular? that uh, you're studying. I know uh, you go out and do these awesome videos and you told me one time you were collecting dust and I still don't, to this day don't understand what that means. But anything specific that you want to go into science for? Uh, you know, I haven't decided what exactly I'm going to do with this degree. The market's growing and as you know, time goes on, there's more and more demands for the green type uh, industry so I, I haven't really been exposed. I kind of, I want to study nature, uh, ecosystems, and how they all uh, are woven together to work in harmony. I think that's uh, a really cool thing. And, you know, cool. growing up, just watching the Discovery Channel and National Geographic, it was like kind of a natural thing for me when I started taking these classes. Like, well, I, I know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. I can, you know, this is something I want to do. So, you know, the, the awesome, planet man. we live on is an awesome gift we've been giving with all the resources that's on it. Um, and some people are getting out of hand with that. And, you know, hopefully the, the, the end goal is what I'll end up doing is hope, hopefully I can help um, with some of the environmental challenges that the earth is facing. And, you that's know, awesome. Yeah. So. And that's great that you're getting your education down here in Las Cruces and doing that. Uh, I, what I kind of wanted to talk to you about is because during this whole uh, pandemic, there's been a lot of outside issues that have been affected, and we always kind of touch on businesses because uh, that's what our primary focus was. Uh, we have a business, and we do a lot with local restaurants and local businesses going under and state issues and things like that. But I don't think a lot of people have touched enough on, number one, <clears throat> mental health, which we're going to be getting onto on some later podcasts. And uh, thank you for helping us out with that. But number two, what happened with students? Um, regardless of the industry that they're going into, the, we have a big college community down here. What has been the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic and then in, in 2020, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, what has been uh, the effect basically on students? I know it's kind of hybrid learning and, and we worry about the children and their hybrid learning, but what about for you guys, just speak specifically to you guys, what has happened during that time and what are some of the difficulties that have happened? Um, well, it's been a great change of pace. Uh, having this pandemic going on and having to learn everything remotely and not being able to be on, on campus and doing virtual labs and um, it really takes that element out of being in a classroom and you're surrounded with other students. And, and the big deal for me uh, was that you don't have that person in class asking, you know, the not so dumb question that somebody else may not have even known they wanted to know that unlocks so much for them. I mean, there's the whole environment of having the in-person is, is so much different than the remote learning. And remote learning, you know, last semester I had one of my teachers that didn't, she was totally absent the whole class. It was just automated and we never got, I never got to talk to her. I ended up using an old teacher I had as a, te a tutor. Thank you, Mr. Casillas, for that. Shout out uh, to Mr. Casillas. Yes, that was very helpful. But it's just, um, you know, being a, an adult student, um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm lacking behind on the technology, whereas, you know, a lot of the 
students that are coming right out of high school and going into college that's it's like pretty seamless for them and they're already used to using um, all this different technology to uh, for their learning experience but it, it, it's been it's been difficult and, and last semester I thought was going to be my worst semester and I'm I'm a Crimson Scholar like I have a 3.74 GPA whatever and uh, <laughs> but last semester I thought it was going to be the worst because it was such a struggle and I was just so, you know, kind of scared, you know, um, which kind of probably helped motivate me to do better than I normally would. And I ended with like a 3.91 at the end of the semester, which was so, very surprising to me. But it's, it's tough. Well, that's that's great. Uh, so let me ask you this question. Um, I know it might not seem like it to everybody that sees us eating food and doing all these crazy videos, but I'm actually a shy person by nature. So in class what about those shy people that i would think that normally wouldn't ask a question <clears throat> but someone else in class does ask that, that question and it helps them out now you don't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction so has it been difficult for you um to basically get the answers to the questions that you have and do you think it was difficult for other students is there a way that other students in class can chat with each other how is this whole system working right now for you guys so the one thing uh, that I've noticed between all the professors and the teachers is that it is completely inconsistent. Every teacher has their own way of doing things. And my chemistry teacher uh, last semester, she did a really good job because she made it as simple as possible. She had a whiteboard in her house and she did her, her Zoom meetings, her class times were live and she did it just like we were in the class and people were, all the mics were muted and we were able to ask questions and that was really helpful. But yeah, as okay. far as when it's recorded or um, you're not allowed to talk, you're all muted. Those questions are really hard uh, to get answered. And even with the chat that's in there, sometimes a teacher doesn't want to answer questions in the chat and then you're beyond that moment. Um, and I think it's really important when that, when your moment comes where you have a question about a specific thing that they're, they're talking to you about, that you get that answer question, that, that question answered right there. Um, so the connections made, if it happens an hour later, then it's hard to, you know, sometimes it's hard to make that connection. So, I mean, a lot of note taking, it, it, it was, it's just been very difficult. And I, and it seems like almost like, I don't want to bad mouth the teachers because I really appreciate everything they do. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to go to school at this stage of my life. But, um, it's almost as if some of them are just setting up the classes now to make it easier on them uh, versus making it uh, easier for the students to learn. Like I'm, I'm there to learn and I am usually the person that asks the questions because I'm not as shy as some, some other students. And, and um, I, I try and keep, you know, there's a certain culture when you're in a classroom than when, you, when you're in uh, uh, remote learning. And, and I just can't wait to get back. And hopefully in fall, we'll be able to get back into class. I'll be able to get my hands dirty in the labs. And, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be back to somewhat normal. Yeah. So know? this is going to be kind of a, a two-part question. One thing, which was a great segue on just on what you just mentioned in the labs. So just to finish off kind of the conversation with you, uh, that we just had, would you think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hindered the ability to learn? and made it more difficult right now? Or would you say the majority, I know on you, you would talk a little bit about IT and trying to, where people had a seamless process from high school, but since we're a little bit older, it was maybe a little bit more difficult. Even taking that into account, would you say COVID-19 uh, hindered learning in college or it was seamless? Not Well, not necessarily seamless, but made it easier. That's the number one question. Number two, being with that you're in environmental science, labs is a big part of what you do. You can't learn everything in a textbook. No. It's not uh, English and math and, and reading. I mean, this is not ancient history that you can go read about. You have to be out there in the field doing that. So that's my next question. So kind of a two-part question. Has it been more difficult or has it been something you've been able to cope with? And number two, how did the labs affect you in your specific job? Well, it's... it's um... I've been able to cope with it. It's basically sink or swim, you know, uh, and, and unfortunately when the semester started last, uh, well, the last semester started, 
you you would I'd have a class and it'd start with like 25 kids and then uh, you'd see like the numbers reducing and the zoom attendance going down and th those those people I think my chemistry uh, class ended up down to six people and it started with like 20 something because of think. people dropping out of the class or because yeah, people just, just decided not to attend because it's not live well okay so there's probably a couple of reasons uh, it's not live so it made diff uh, learning very difficult and then they were having a hard time keeping up because when the teacher's zooming you have so much time to do the zoom and they're just rattling off and they really don't have much time to stop and explain things so uh, and then getting a hold of the teacher, you know, you usually got to send an email. You don't have a direct that direct line like you do in the classroom. You can ask them after the class, hey, I really didn't understand that. Can you take a couple minutes and explain it to me? Yeah. Type of situation. Yeah, ex exactly. Or even in there. I mean, I, I in class, I'm normally like button in and trying to, you know, because it, it's important to me to uh, be able to understand the, the content that's happening. And... Uh, yeah, the other thing is the resources with the whole COVID uh, pandemic is like I used to take advantage of the tutoring center. Like I'm not shy. I mean, like I, I didn't think I knew everything. I didn't get everything. I don't know everything. And I, I had to go for math. I had to go for science and and it's been closed. And then and then once again, they open it up for having a Zoom meeting with them. And then that was kind of cumbersome to try and get down and not everybody was available at all, you know, different tutors here. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of a mess. And, 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 you know, I hope uh, this semester is better. I hope they've, you know, reflected on uh, how the program went last year. I'm sure they did. I'm confident they did. And, um, and I know that, that uh, the university just wants to get better. At the, I know they want kids to, to learn. But, um, you know, you got to have 100% buy-in from all the teachers. And there's, t you know, a couple different types of teachers. There's teachers there that have a passion of teaching people. And there's people there that are just wanting a pension, you know. And, and, and I've had them both. And, and it's sad. And the ones that really want to teach and are passionate about teaching want to make sure you understand uh, the, the uh, content before you leave the class, um, they're, having a, they're having a hard time, too. I mean, they get frustrated and they break down too. And I, I've, unfortunately, I've seen it, and it's, it's tough. I just it's been very difficult. Uh, my wife's a principal of a charter high school here in town, so I can see the frustrations that she goes through every day. So I know from the educator standpoint, and we'll have educators in la on later podcasts. From the educator standpoint, I know it's difficult, but I think a lot of people are missing out on the students and what they're going through in this uh, time. Because when you signed up for college. You didn't know anything of this was going to happen. So you signed up for a career. This is a hobby. This is something that you wanted to do. This is what you're passionate about. You want to learn about it. And then it gets to a point where now it's uh, difficult to get what you uh, want to get done. So yes, that's I mean, been crazy. The lab thing, though, has just been nuts because you do a lot of work in the field. And I've watched some of your videos, and they've been awesome. And we've worked together, so we've had a chance to talk about this off camera. But working in a, with the, in a lab situation, I know you're not by people um, when you're out in the field. Mm -hmm. There's no one around you. And I've literally seen these, no one. Literally no one for miles. <laughs> um, but just as far as is in a lab, when you come back with your results and being able to sit people down together and discuss those things, has that been difficult? It has, it has been difficult. Um, you mean in the classes or because uh, I'm also, I work for... New Mexico Climate Center through NMSU as a student, and um, we have there's challenges with that as well. I mean, the, the well, just building... we'll, we'll talk about the classes, then we'll get into that because I, I want to really talk about that. How uh, you're actually uh, basically making a career out, out of what you went to college for, which is great. But as far as just normal classes, how do you, how do you guys do the labs? Okay, so <clears throat> last semester in my biology class. We had virtual labs, and I've done a virtual lab the semester before that, and um, you know, it, it's virtu It's like you walk into a room, and you got to put your lab coat on, your gloves, your goggles. You have to get. Wait, are you putting like an Oculus? Like, no, it's not like... Oculus. You're just at your monitor, your computer okay. screen, and you got to okay. move your guy and click on like a video things. game. It, it's like a video game, which I think is actually a good way of teaching people ought to learn because there's a lot of kids that like video games out there and right. spend ridiculous amount of time on it. 
Maybe. You know, and I, <laughs> you know, Myself. and I think if you could learn something, but that, that's another and Joey story. Joey Cipher. <laughs> Me and him play video games every night. <laughs> but yeah, so it's kind of like a video game, okay. but you got to go on, and you know, you have the table elements, and then you have a bench, and and you actually have to pick up tweezers and test tubes and set them in a rack and heat them and mix different chemicals, and if you do it wrong, it tells you. And that's the one thing that's different with the virtual labs because. Uh, the virtual labs will tell you when you do something wrong, and, and it actually makes it to where there's no margin for mistake for your results. And whereas if you're in a you're physically in a lab a lab doing your your uh, experiments, there's human error is a big deal in that. And uh, so so would you say the hands-on experience is not as important as the knowing you did something wrong from the beginning because then you get to the end and it could work out possibly not really how you wanted it but you're like oh yeah it, i mean it happened but within a virtual from step one they're like and eh, yeah. that was wrong yeah try again so is the hands-on learning more important or the knowing you're doing something wrong i think it is because for me when i make a mistake like you i know you know it, it kind of etches in your brain that that was a mistake that was made like if you, um, you know, put the utensil in the wrong trash bin or if you pour the wrong chemical in, in the test tube, um, you know, you, you'll kind of remember that. And, it, and especially if there's like a flash or a gassing off or something like that. Something crazy. You, yeah. You, you know you did something wrong and that kind of burns it. But where you're a video game, it's like I, I got infinity lives. I you can know, mess this up every I time. I can mess this up every time until it okay. puts me through the next step, you know, so... Uh, I think it's really important to have uh, hands-on, in-person labs, but I do think it's really cool that they've made the virtual labs to where you could still do something. And, and I mean, the labs we do, you have the test tube, like I said, and you got to put the biohazard in the biohazard bag. You got to put this in the trash bin, and you have to like it makes you repeat things, and then there's a time you have to wait for reactions to happen. And I think it's really beneficial at this time that they actually have those. And I, I don't think they developed those because of COVID. I think those have been around, but um, I think they really got generated a lot of um, steam when they when the COVID hit for yeah, that. Now you have to do it. Like now that. you have to do the lab yeah. like this, and it's the only way. That, like you said, there's some class. I just can't get you can't get through the book. You have to do the experiments, and and um, and and that it, it's been hard. But we made so do you do you think in your personal opinion and I haven't seen the stats or anything like that if someone wants to comment those down below that'd be fantastic uh, do you think there's been a rise I, I would have to we have to put it you're a scientist we have to put it all the ways do you think there's a, been a rise in uh, people registering for college during this pandemic or do you think there's been a decline in people that are already registered that said I can't do this online and I'm I'm an audio learner uh, by default, just the way I learn. I'm I'm not the smartest guy in the world. We always joke about that, but I learn uh, more by audio, not visual so much. I'm more of an audio and hands on. Mm. This is kind of audio because you're obviously doing it online, mm -hmm. but there's totally the hands off. So those the non kinesthetic learners that are completely hands on. Do you think this has had an effect? I think it so you're or do you think this has made it easier because there's still a there's still a sector of people that maybe didn't go to college before because it was hands on and in person they feel more comfortable <clears throat> doing this mm. in the privacy of their own home. That's something also to take in cons to consideration. Yeah, I haven't had the opportunity to look at the analytics of if there was a rise. I, I I've only heard that there's been a, a slight de decrease in attendance. And you have heard that. I have heard that. Okay. Um, but but I haven't really looked at any hard numbers. And there's some other things going on with the classes between um, DACC and NMSU um, that has changed since the end of last year, last quarter of last year. Um, but that's interesting. I mean, people that... You, well, so there's there's always been students that have always taken classes online. There's people that have gotten degrees just strictly online. Right, right. And I, I can't, I'm not one of those guys. Like, if you're taking a science class or lab class or even a math class, I would prefer to be in. But, like, history, 
English. Like English is, you know, for me it was it's fairly easy. I could write all day about nothing, you know. But um, oh, like, man, you're gonna piss off some English majors right <laughs> now during this podcast. I mean, <laughs> hey. But but the the people that uh, um, mine and your daughter are really are close friends, and. Uh, so for some of my daughter, we were talking about trying to push her into get into some public speaking and things like that. She's only 14, but just to get her out there because in the business world, you have to speak to people and you have to do this. She has been actually excelling during it going to online as she was during uh, live in the class. That's interesting. Well, I mean, probably... I can see that because it takes anxiety anxiety out of it, right? Because you don't have to be seen, you don't have to speak. Um, it's uh, from what I understand, it's not a requirement. Um, my daughter does the online too, um, like most kids around, and we had some trouble getting the right laptop. You know. Yeah, in Doniana County, uh, we're not hybrid or anything like that. I know there's other parts because we get all states and all countries that listen to this. We are still at this day. Um, and we're recorded this January 21st. So we're still at this point, nobody, it, it's all non-hybrid. It's all online learning. Yeah. Online, all remote so, learning. All remote learning. And we had some troubles. Um, but my daughter too, I'm getting texts every week that she's doing great. She's being an outstanding student. And I think they're just trying to reward because, you know, these classes, when they're in session, there's like 30 people in a class, 30 students in a classroom. Right. Um, we're talking like middle school, high school, 30 and so when my daughter goes online to her classes, there's like six or seven. I've seen that. So too, I my mean, I, and I've read that that's been a hu- attendance has been a huge problem for public schools, and um, you know, good job for those kids that are sticking it out and going going to school. I mean, it, it, I'm is, proud is that of my the same way for college though? Have you seen that? So do you have, do you have group zooms where it's supposed to be the whole class, yes. and instead of thirty windows like we're watching The Voice, it's uh, a. <laughs> Six. Well, like I said, my chemistry six? class started with twenty-something students, and at the end there was only six of us. Which, um, um, for the six of us that were left, we were pretty tight knit, and we all, you know, the the prof- or the doctor was able to uh, make sure we understood and give us time um, for everything we needed. And uh, yeah, definitely has decreased. It's in that aspect and and i know that they so the professors and my instructors they'll record their sessions and i think they do for the the uh, the middle school and the grad or high school they'll re- record their zoom sessions so the kids can always click on them later too at a time that's more convenient and look at them and do their work too and 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 so there's a lot of things that are going on that i, I don't see being in the classroom because i'm doing everything i'm trying to get things done before i get to class and then do, getting the information, then doing the stuff right after class, and right, and you know, I can say just uh, and this is just me from my student days. Even if it was pre-recorded, I was just not a very good student. So I know if we would have had online classes that were mandatory when I was younger, I would have came up with every excuse in the book to give my mom that I just watched, and I would have just not gone to class at all. Having to physically be there does really put, I think, uh, kind of you're there, you might as well learn it kind of thing. You can't talk to your friends in class. We can't sit there and have a conversation like this. So your teacher's kind of making you do something. So in the back of your mind, whether you're not receiving it full frontal, you're stick. still getting it. Something's still sticking. And I think that's the only reason I ended up semi-okay. Um, so that's kind of crazy. I wanted to talk about the labs. We kind of touched all on that. My next thing, and this is going to be something that's really not up your alley, but I just kind of wanted to get your feedback on that. Um, when I was running for office before, we had this great college. We have the, uh, these great community college. We have Doniana Branch. We have NMSU. We have this great facility for learning. And I feel like the high school students that achieve and excel that go to NMSU, it's for the sake of getting their degree and then leaving and going to another community later, or moving to a different state or moving to a different country and doing their skills that they learned here. And my big thing is we need to develop whatever the top five main things are in MSU. We have to have production and manufacturing and the industry in place 
to suit these students so they can work here, make a great living here, make a good enough living to pay for the expenses that it takes you guys to go through college and do these things. What's kind of your thoughts on that? And we've talked about this off camera, and I know we're going to talk about it a little bit right now, of when you graduate, your main goal is not to stay here either. And so what is uh, the reasoning behind that? Your reasons are going to be a little bit different than other people's. So what is the reasoning behind you leaving? Is it, is it, is it the community? Is it what you're studying for? If you're an oceanographer, obviously there's no ocean here. <laughs> You got to go. Um, so do you think that's an effect? And do you hear other students talking about that? And what's kind of kind of your thoughts on going to school in Doniana County in Las Cruces, New Mexico? Um, I think there's plenty of opportunity uh, for the students that go here. A lot of the students come from out of town. and um, But a lot of them, like you said, do come out of high school here. And it's an easy transition just to get into NMSU or DACC. And I think that's wonderful. And as far as um, them getting a degree here, uh, you know, NMSU is a huge agricultural Very big university. And there's a lot of agriculture around here. Now, guns up. <laughs> um, so there, there is plenty to do. But us being the city of Las Cruces or Donna Anna, being on the cusp, being a metro area, I mean, we're barely... You know, we're, we're, it's we're above out. a town, yeah, but not a city, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. We're almost think, metro. Yeah, so so there is not a lot of industry, you know, and, and when you go to university, the hopes is that you get a degree that you can be able to support your family and do something that you're interested in or, or have a passion for. And so I, I do know a lot of students come from out of town and they, they get their degree and then they go back to where they came from. That that's that's a normal thing, um, uh, and you would hope that the students that come out of high school locally that go to the university once they get their degree, they can you know be the future leaders of Las Cruces. Yeah, and transition into something here. Yeah, because definitely there's room for that, and there's plenty of uh, um, uh, degrees you can get at the school to be able to facilitate that as far as leading the the, the town, the county. Uh, but for me, you know, environmental science and what I'm looking to do is, you know, when I got into it, you know, they told me I, I could I could be working on a glacier for a while. I could be working on a volcano. I could be working in a rainforest. And we don't have glaciers here. We do have volcanoes, but they're rather extinct. Um, so, you know, I'm looking to... Um, probably leave the area of Las Cruces and do some research abroad. Uh, I really want to go to Costa Rica. Uh, I wouldn't mind going to Alaska. I was just telling my wife last night, I said Alaska would be so cool to go to. 24-hour uh, daylight and just experience that I for, saw the for a couple of days. Way too many times. Yeah, just for a couple of days. and get on a plane and fall asleep, come back. But, you know, then Hawaii is a hot spot. Um, with the volcanoes and that, that, that they're, they're live, they're always going off. So, you know, and then California hydrology, there's, there's a, not that I'm saying I'd want to move to California. I, I grew up there and it's just not what it used to be. Uh, but there's plenty of opportunity for me outside of this area um, to pursue a career. And that's probably what I'm doing. I don't really know uh, what exactly I'll be doing. I mean, yeah. Every major corporation now has an environmental department. You yep. know, there's a environmental statement. You know, they know what their environmental impact is, their carbon footprints. That's a really big push. And I, I think, um, not to move away from the, the topic here, but I, I think manufacturers in the United States and companies and corporations are doing a good job. I mean, they're really conscious. I mean, 20, compared to like 20 years ago, like when nobody was recycling. It's light years, right? Yeah, it's almost like light years. But I mean, people are very conscious. I mean, you got there's tons of Priuses out there. Everybody, you know, wants to wants to do their part. And I think this country and especially this area is doing a good job of it. So, um, you know, so there's that. But yeah, they 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 come in, they leave the students, they go back to where they're at. Um, you know, there's always opportunities flying at us. When you, especially when you join a club at, at the university, that you have opportunities coming at you and people, you know, 
want internships all over the place. So, so real quick, because you actually not only are a student, but you ended up also gaining employment through that. So for the young students out there that are uh, <clears throat> in high school and they want to make that seamless transition to NMSU, one of the big things that I just took out of what you said with about going to Costa Rica or Hawaii, you're learning the education here mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Correct. And I'm not saying everybody should stay here in Las Cruces or anything like that. I left when I graduated high school and I came back to appreciate it as an adult. Um, but what you just said. So what is it that you do for NMSU? Uh, because I think it's a huge thing for people to understand that you can go to college and what you graduate in, you can also do. And I think you're a living testament to that. So for the younger students out there that are thinking uh, what I want to go into or is it the right thing for me and can my hobby actually be a job? What what was it what that you do for NMSU and what's been your experience? Because you've made it happen. So I, I've been on a couple of projects now and I wouldn't have been on these projects if I didn't join a club. So I'm part of the Environmental Science Student Organization. Um, just kind of went with what I'm doing, my program for school. And the first project I worked on was a pretty cool project. And I mean, the whole point of this, you know, if you're going to school, go to try and find something you like to do or find interesting because then you can have fun with it. And, and that's what I do. I try and make the best of it. And so the first awesome. project, I, yeah, the first project I worked on, and they were saying that this, this doctor's looking for help and he's a doctor at the university. Uh, and uh, I, I said, yeah, I'm willing to help. And we ended up working on a paper for the USDA that was... Uh, comparing agriculture to air quality and air quality to agriculture and the effects that they have on each other. Is that the effects of cow farts? Um, <laughs> that's, there's a in couple Jason papers. Terms? That, I mean, Is that I, the effects of cow farts? Mm, a little bit, okay. a little bit. All right, but, go ahead, yeah, yeah, so we'll talk about this later. The, the uh, confined animal farming operations do create a lot of waste, but uh, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, the cars that are driving down the street all day in front of your studio here contributes you know more Point carbon more. yeah it could it, it's it's not comparable my conclusion to that was to ag leave agriculture alone they really don't contribute to um the air quality as uh, in the grand scheme of things as far as the cars and the manufacturing that goes on so uh, that was one project we worked on and i had to read like 650 articles and dissect them into spreadsheets and cite them and get their DOI number and 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 it, it was it was a long project but it got uh, my feet wet on the type of work that'll be done once I get done with my degree and it also paid me so these jobs that I get they're paying jobs and they don't pay a, a lot but it helps subsidize and it, it, it's worth your time and then the project that I'm working on now with the New Mexico Climate Center is um, basically going around the state we have several uh, weather stations around the state and it's managing, maintaining, and we have uh, trail cams set up on them so we could uh, uh, actually record uh, weather events that happened. So, um, and we have a student working that just just reviews all that data wow. that looking for events. And then um, there's an, another uh, part of that is we, analyze the the amount of uplift of dust from wind out in the playas out past animus like really close to arizona and it's just a flat flat desert field and and it's hard to drive and you'll get stuck but we have all these cans out there set up with tubes in them and they're a different it's actually pretty crazy it, it, it's yeah pretty crazy. yeah it's it's pretty crazy and you you wonder how like so you'll you might see an ad oh the the dust in the air this week is so certain bad. Well, that's the type of stuff that we're analyzing. You know, we're looking at where do you think they get that data from? I mean, they don't. Uh, 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 it's the not someone like just a, doesn't make that up. So like, Joey Cipher doesn't walk outside. And he's like, it's pretty dusty today. I'm gonna say it's severe. Well, that's you what can I say it, say it's severe, but usually, Shout out to <laughs> Joey Cipher. usually in those articles, you you want some some fact. De factual data in there he is the but it feels like guy though you know that right so you know it's like 90 degrees outside but it feels like this oh he is that guy. oh he's the one that feels yeah. like that yeah he's oh. like it feels like this 
That's interesting. He's a scientist, yeah. So, but... Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all, though? I mean... I'm sorry, I'm throwing you Kids off. are the coolest scientists. <laughs> you know, it, it, you don't want them to get hurt or bump the wall or break anything or mix this or that. But the, no, data just comes, do it. the data comes from a place. Yeah, the data comes from a place. And, and, and so... It kind of, you know, you might be in the background of stuff, but you can look at that and be like, yeah, that's that's kind of what we're doing there. And uh, the big deal is, is getting out there and, and analyzing and doing as much research work as you can as a student, and you're even getting paid for it. So, I mean, awesome. what the heck? I, this is the exact type of stuff that you'll be doing in the field once you get your degree. And for me, it's environmental science, but there's also this, there's so many different branches so many different degrees you can take out agriculture you can get straight geology straight uh biology um genetics uh soil soil degree um compost water uh and then there's all the plant sciences too so there's a lot to do and like i said the market's expanding and it's growing so i'm not worried about where i'm going to get a job it's like where I want to work is basically uh, awesome. what I'm looking forward to, and the adventure it takes me on. How many years uh, do you have to put into this to get the type of career or degree that will send you to Costa Rica or put you on a glacier or send you to Hawaii? You know, it just depends. Two years? Uh, no, two, I'm just two years? No, no, probably not. More. You'd want you'd want to at least have a bachelor's in your field. But like once again, going back to the clubs, those are the people that get sought after. It's really easy to hit one hub that has a bunch of people in it than it is for uh, a company to solicit to every student and not quite know which church. So these clubs, um, they have their own niches, and so the employers they'll they'll go to the, directly these clubs and and the advisors of these clubs which are the doctors or the professors of the university and um you know they kind of pass that on so it's just you know a lot of time those are like dream jobs right like going to costa rica maybe for some people maybe not but um they do happen and the best the best odds for that happening is being part of a club so where do uh future students find these clubs what do they do? How did you find the club that you're in, for example? I know you're in a couple That's different That's a good question. So what, what is it that you do when you're a student? Okay, so what I did was I was actively looking for, like, clubs to be a part of because I'm trying... professors, things like that? Yeah, I just asked professors, and, and a lot of them weren't really sure, but I, I got pointed in the right direction from my um, geology teacher a couple semesters ago. And they said, check out this. And so I went, and that's when we were having in-person meetings. So I just showed up to one of the meetings. I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. I want to be a part of it. And then I joined, and then COVID happened, and we really haven't been able to do too many outdoor activities. But we were still doing activities. And just, be, like I said, just being a part of that, then people know, employers know that's where to go for different things. And that's internships awesome. are awesome. This summer coming up, I, I'm a, I've applied for uh, – uh, Harvard University internship in their forestry department um, to do some research there and I think that's that that'd be really cool awesome. and there's there's a ton of them out there and that thing that uh, it's not really an internship it's like a research program it pays ninety three hundred dollars for two months Wow and it's all remote we could we can't go there so it's gonna be all remote there's another one out of st. Louis Missouri that's paying seven thousand dollars for two months it's like there are resources out there. Um, That's awesome. You just got to keep, pick, you know, turning over rocks and and uh, pay attention to the emails you get and just be interested, get involved, and and that's that's the way to get through this. Uh, networking is a big deal. Um, you know, if you don't know, that, <coughs> if you're confused on something, I I am not too shy to where I won't. I mean, I bug the crap out of my professors. And to where it's annoying, and I said, I, I'm sorry to be annoying, or if I'm bothering you, they're like, no, no, I wish we had more students like this. So, you know, if you're ever stuck on something, just email your teacher, email another student, just, 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 that's the only way we're going to get through this. Just ask, because they don't know. They don't know, you don't know. So That's awesome. So to finish this up, I got to ask you this. So let's say you get that dream job in Costa Rica. 
What does that entail? What are you doing in Costa Rica? <sighs> There's a lot. The Costa Rica is like the cornucopia of life. I mean, there is so Whoa, much there. That's a big thing. Shout out to Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Cornucopia of life. There's so many different species of animals. <coughs> we should make that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's there's so many different animal species there. There's so many uh, vegetative species there. There's the fruits, the vegetables. There, There's a lot. They have, you know, you can work uh, hydrology, which is with water out there, soil. Um, What's your thing? What are you what? doing down there? Your dream job, they're hiring in Costa Rica. What are you doing? I'm going to do whatever they want me to do. And that's the cool thing about environmental science is that it encompasses all the disciplines. Like I said before, you can get your degree in geology, biology, whatever. Those paths are very specific where you're taking 100 geology classes or 100 biology classes, whereas the environmental sciences, we take 100 of each discipline, <laughs> it seems like. You know, so I, I've had, I, I can, I can, I hope to literally be able to fill any void that they have down there and be able to do anything they need um, or I need. I, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know, there's... Uh, Get into <laughs> environmental science. You see how excited he gets about that? If you're going to NMSU, you're in high school, environmental science, Mr. Nick Luke, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. It was an eye-opening experience. I had a lot of questions. I don't get to talk to college students often. Um, so I appreciate that. And then a uh, shout-out to Gabe, uh, my brother-in-law, because he's been doing six years of college, and now he had to go to all remote. And I know you're in the long run also. This has just been awesome. So thank you so much. Shout-out to NMSU, Doniana Branch, Guns up. Everybody is amazing. Let's get this guy to Costa Rica. But uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you guys have any podcasts that you would like to hear, or there's someone around town that you want us to interview, anything like that, send us a message, drop us a link, make sure you share this YouTube video, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. Joey Cypher, Digital Sound Solutions, DJ, Michael Lerner, Digital Solutions, Haley, Kayla, and, of course, Nick Luke on the other side of the table today as opposed to the other side. That's what's going down. That's the What's Going Down podcast. Number three, check us out next Saturday, and we have a new one for you.